Allison and I'm Bryce and we're, we're Better Half Reviews and today we are looking at Captain's Log Crisis Detected. This is an upcoming Kickstarter. It's launching on October 20th and it's from Tallymark Entertainment. Captain's Log Crisis Detected is a three to five player game set in deep space. You're controlling a fleet of ships that are carrying valuable cargo and you're trying to sabotage the other player's ships to blow them up. All right, so let's take a look at the game. Real quick, this is a pre-production copy, so just know that these are not final components. And at the beginning of the game, everybody picks their spaceship color and pick up the cargo cards that match that color. And on the back is what the cargo numbers are, so one through five. You can choose where you want to place them, or you can shuffle them up and have them at random. You place out your cards, and then you place out your spaceships on top where you see the little spaceship symbol. Everybody is dealt five cards to begin with, and you start your turn. So on your turn, you can play as many cards as you want, but only one crisis card per turn. So I've got some recruits. I can play them underneath some of my spaceships, so I'll do that. And I have like a swap card that can help me like, you know, interact with other players and change things up. And I've got this crisis card that I can play on top of someone else's spaceship. So let's just say that, for example, I had a crisis card placed on me. And now that it is my turn, I have to try to save that ship. So this is a mutiny card. I need either a captain, security, or two times recruit in order to save this ship. So looking at my hand, I have an engineer and one recruit. I do not have enough to save my ship. So when that happens, the ship explodes. And we have a house rule where you have to make a sound. So it's exploded. My ship is gone, and now that cargo does not count at the end of the game. You still keep it hidden, though, because you don't want people to know which cargo is exploded or not. And even though Allison did have two recruit cards, technically, one in her hand and one on this spaceship, she couldn't have moved the recruit from this spaceship to another spaceship. You're out in space. <laughs> There's no transport between the spaceships. It's not Star Trek. And if I had a recruit here, when this exploded, the recruit would go away as well. So now let's give an example. So if someone had played the mutiny on me and I needed either captain, security, or two times recruit, I have two recruit cards right here. So I could play them. And then that would help to discard the mutiny. And that way my ship would be saved. And these would just be discarded. There are different cards in here that help you to interact with players and to change it up. So this could let you deflect an attack. You can swap cards with uh, somebody. You can untether someone else's crew. So that can help you to try to destroy people's ships because then they don't have their crew there available. There's medics, engineers. And there's this rapid fire card that lets you play two different crisis cards. So that can be really powerful. So the game ends when one player's ships are all completely destroyed. And so now you're going to total up what cargo you have left. So I have two ships left. Let's find out how many points I got total. So I had a two cargo and a four cargo. So I have six points total. And you match it up and see who has the most cargo. And they are the winner. All right, so that's how you play the game. Let's talk about how we feel about it. So, what are some of the pros? Um, I love that everything in this game is just very distinctive. So all the different types of cards are labeled very well, and they're also color-coded. So, you know, blue, orange, pink, it's really easy to tell what type of cards you have in your hand just at a quick glance. So I think that's really helpful for the family range, especially if you're playing with some younger kids to focus more on, like, pictures and colors. Yeah, definitely. The game is very simple, very family friendly. Um, we've played it at five player with a couple of younger kids and they were able to pick it up really easily. Mm -hmm. And something else that I like about the game is I love the little ship card and how it fits just perfectly right on there. <laughs> and then when it explodes, unfortunately, but um, you flip it over and it fits. I just I love that little idea. Like, you know, they could have just done something different, like full cards, but I love that it has Here's your ship with the little cargo, and you flip it over. <laughs> it's, it's really cute to me. Yeah, and I like how the cargo, um, you can mix it up, and they're all different values. So 
you could play some like mind games a little bit like oh i'm pr really protecting this this cargo on this ship but it might be my you know, one, card. one card as opposed to my five and try to trick people a little bit. Or something that we like to do to like mix it up, haha, <laughs> literally. Um, sometimes we'll play where we don't even know which card, like which cargo cards are where, and we'll just shuffle it and just put it out and just go for it and see what happens. But yeah, so that's fun too. Um, so are there any things that you don't like about the game? I wouldn't necessarily say that I don't like, but there's a couple things that um, don't necessarily work too well in my opinion. Okay. So one of them is the trading. It's supposed to be blind trading and you can lie. Even in the rules it says like you can lie and stuff but like with the amount of players once you lie once everybody's like oh I'm not going to trade with that person anymore <laughs> or they're going to be like I want assurances that this is the card I'm really getting and so I don't know. I didn't feel like the lying, kind of blind trading part of it was really that big of a factor in the game. I feel like it just depends on your gaming group. Like, if you're playing with the younger age range, I would, like, we didn't really use that much when we played with that, so I, it, it felt unnecessary. But I can see how, like, if you're playing with a little bit of an older group, you'd be like, yeah, here's some two cards. I'll give you some two recruits. And then you're like, ah! So, it's just up to the gaming group I feel so like we didn't yeah. really use it but it's not necessarily a negative but you don't have to do it if you don't want to and I do like the trading it does make the game a lot more dynamic and you're able to get the crew members that you need to mm -hmm. take care of the crisis cards because at a lower player count game we did play it two player even though it's supposed to be three or up um I can and I can even see it at a three player where you might be a little more reluctant to trade because it's going to be like, well, if I trade with you and give you what yeah. you want, you're just going to win. Like, yeah. Um, but so with the, the higher player count, trading was really good. Yeah. So trading is good, um, and it doesn't. I don't feel like it comes in as much at the lower player counts, but it, it does help a lot with being able to take care of the crisis cards. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I was thinking about, where it, you know, if you're playing with younger kids, you don't want the game to be too long. And when we had it at five player, I could see how it could kind of stretch out. Um, so rather than playing all the way till some all of one person's ships were exploded, we just played till we got to the end of the deck and then counted up all the cargo that we had. And so I mean, that's just like a house rule. But we felt like that kept it like if you just want to have a little bit shorter game with a higher player count, you could just go to the end of the deck rather than going all the way through one person's ship. But that's just how it went with us. Yeah, and that's true. And this game, it says it plays in 25 plus minutes. Like, it is a short game, and you can play it in 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to take all night or anything. No, no not at all. Um, but it is true. Like, up at five player counts, it, or up at five players, it does take a little longer. Yeah. So. But, I mean, that's what happens when you have more players. But it's it's not a drawback at all. That was just something that we traded out, and we thought it worked well if you wanted to keep it a little bit shorter. But yeah, so overall, I, I think this is really great. It's a fun family level game. There's a little bit of a take that where you're going to explode people's ships, but you know, you don't take yourself too seriously and it's just cute and fun. Yeah, definitely. We've had a great time every time we've played it, even at two player, even at five player. Um, it's always been a fun game to pull out. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the game. It is launching October 20th on Kickstarter. We definitely like it. You guys should go check it out and see what there is to come on the campaign. So if you want to see more content like this about upcoming Kickstarters and other games we like to play, uh, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'm Bryce. I'm Allison. And we're Better Half Reviews. Happy gaming. Have fun.